Hey everybody, welcome back. It is the epic fail of Arturo Zamora, and this is going to be chapter 12. So find that in your book. You should be following along as I read aloud. Okay, here we go. Chapter 12, Behind Smiles and Good Service. My mom rushed into Abuela's room, still wearing her chef's coat. She gave Abuela some medicine, checked her pulse, and pushed us out so Abuela could rest. We stood in the living room without saying a word. I could tell my mom was really worried. Mom, I said, walking over to her. See? For the second time today, I spilled my guts. I told my mom everything about visiting Wilfredo's office, about La Cocina missing from his building plan, about how excited people seemed about Pipo Place, about finding out that a proposal by Wilfredo to take over the restaurant's lease had been submitted to the city. I told my mom everything. Todo. And you shared this information with Abuela? She asked. I nodded. There was a long pause before my mom turned to Carmen. Carmen, can you please give me a minute with Arturo? Her lips pursed and she looked at me with a face that said, just wait till Carmen leaves. Carmen nodded and excused herself. I braced for the worst as my mom paced around Abuela's living room. Arturo, you know that Abuela has a disease that affects her lungs, she said. Yes. She needs to limit her activities and excitement. I, I just thought, you know, because so many people love her, she might be able to convince the neighborhood to vote against Wilfredo. My mom exhaled deeply. Arturo, if we go around acting as if we are desperate to win the favor of the community, then we will fail. Is that what you were talking about with Mop's dad? What? My mom stopped pacing and watched me carefully. I overheard you talking to Mr. Darcy. Did you know Wilfredo requested to take over our lease once it expires? Arturo, the city owns the property, and the city board members will vote. It's not fair. It's democracy, Arturo. This is how the government runs. But we have to do something, I said, raising my voice. We're doing what we can. We're not doing enough. I kept quiet for a second, feeling my lips tighten and my eyebrows narrow. You're right, she finally offered, touching my face as if to cool the anger I was feeling. Let's call a family meeting. I nodded, feeling good. When? I asked. Now. Without saying another word, my mom whipped out her phone and started texting furiously. We had a group family chat going at all times, mostly for fun and sometimes to call meetings. Her phone dinged like crazy and you could practically hear the nervousness coming through. Vamos, Arturo. We're meeting everyone in the courtyard. One by one, my family members made their way out of their apartments into the center of the courtyard. Yolanda and Marie argued about a book Marie had borrowed from Yolanda but didn't return, and Brian thought it would be good to bring his speakers to the family meeting. No one was in the mood to hear Flo Rida rapping in the background, and we all let him know it. Carmen came out with her dad and waved to me. Vanessa was at a friend's house and sent many texts asking us to hold off until she got there. My mom didn't want to wait, so Vanessa called me on FaceTime and video conferenced in. Hello, she said as the video caught up with her voice. Arturo, press it so I can see everyone. I could see Vanessa on the screen pulling out a piece of paper. I'll take minutes of the meeting, Vanessa said through the phone. Arturo, can you walk a little closer to everyone? That's perfect, thanks. My mom shook her head and began. I know everyone isn't here. A few cousins were still at the restaurant. I made a note of who isn't here, Tia, Vanessa said. Gracias, mi amor, my mom said and continued. I think we'll start, and the rest can read Vanessa's notes later. What are we discussing, Kari? The art of keeping things as they are and not fighting? No, Tootie, we're going to do something. Finally! You should see how many followers People Place has on Instagram, Yolanda blurted out. He just launched it today. But you're following him also, Mari pointed out. I'm following him because I want to see what he's up to, Okay. Marie and Yolanda went on like that for a bit, and soon others chimed in with opinions. Uncle Carlos spoke up as he tried to keep my twin cousins, Benny and Brad, from crawling all over him while he pushed the double stroller carrying his other set of twins, Brittany and Brianna. We should have proposed to build a daycare in the lot instead, he said. Well, Frida won't have one of those. We could watch all the kids in the neighborhood. Half the kids in the neighborhood are yours, Carlos. Aunt Tootie could be cold sometimes. Do you know the likelihood of having two sets of fraternal twins, Tootie? One in 3,000. One in 3,000. What you should have done is played the lotto after the girls were born. I did. Didn't get one number right. Well, don't play baby lotto again, okay? We only have so many apartments in this complex. Uncle Carlos was the youngest of Abuela's kids and a stay-at-home accountant. 
His wife, my Aunt Murda, was an attorney who worked with the State Department and had to travel a lot, which is why she sometimes missed Sunday family dinner. As an accountant, Uncle Carlos did tax did the taxes for the family as well as La Cocina in between naps and diaper changes. Kari, we need to go to war with this overly perfumed man, Tootie said, getting back on topic. War! We're not doing any of that, Tootie. Then what are we doing? We have to make sure we're the best we can be. Everybody, do your jobs with a little extra attention. We don't want anything to go wrong. The city council will vote on both bids in two and a half weeks. That seemed to get everybody's attention. Yolanda and Mari said they would step up their service. Brian said the drinks would be extra sweet. The cook said the food would have a bit more flavor. We all decided the music that played overhead would throw back to the days when the restaurant first opened 19 years ago. Benny Mori, Celia Cruz, and Tito Puente. My dad vowed to make a special sign to hang outside the restaurant that would say we're celebrating almost two decades and counting. It should look like we're not planning on going anywhere, my mom said. Kari, making little signs and stepping up service is cute and all, but this is bigger than that, Aunt Tootie said. Wilfredo well, Pipo is trying to take us down. We need to fight and fight big. And what do you propose, Tootie? Should we take out machine guns or maybe samurai swords? It's better than hiding behind smiles and extra good service. We are a family-run business and the neighborhood loves us. Being extra attentive will remind people of how special our place is. It's just the right touch. The rest of the family agreed with this plan, except Aunt Tootie, who wanted to take more extreme measures, hanging cazuelas outside of Wilfredo's office at all hours of the day. After the meeting, everyone went back to their apartments. My mom and Aunt Tootie headed to Abuela's to check up on her. I said goodbye to Vanessa and hung up. I wasn't sure how I felt. I was glad that my family was thinking about stepping up their game, but I wasn't sure if it would be enough. 